I feel like my job as an actor is to find the truth in every situation. If I'm not truthful, then you see an actor acting. The Help. Many is a, a compilation for me of a lot of women. Uh, my mom, my sisters, some teachers. I mean, there are a lot of strong women uh, in my life, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Catherine Stockett, the author of The Helm, and Tate were childhood friends, and I met her while she was writing The Help. And I think she kind of didn't know what Minnie would be. And uh, the day that we met, it was hot, and 100 degrees in New Orleans, and uh, I was on a diet, which none of those things are fun. <laughs> She just saw the edge that I had and filled in those blanks with Minnie probably having a little more of an edge than she had anticipated. I got to come up with your questions too? Oh. Eight years later, when the, the book was finished and she was going on her book tour, she asked me to do some key cities with her and I read uh, the Abilene and Minnie characters um, at her book signings. And so I kind of, was loosely uh, associated with it. And then I was asked to do the book on Tate. But I think Tate had always known that he wanted me for many. There was a lot that he had to do, uh, you know, fighting battles for me behind the scenes that I didn't know about, but that I know about now. <laughs> she got what she deserved, I believe. But now I ain't gonna never get no job again. You have to play the time. And uh, now, you know, people think that they would react a certain way, uh, but society was more oppressive uh, than it is now, uh, especially for people of color. And people were killed for much less. So um, it, I had to play the reality of the stakes. Have you lost your mind? No, ma'am, but you about to, because you just did. Did what? <gasps> While it was, you know, funny, it was never funny to many. It was never anything that she wanted to get beyond the two people because she knew had it gotten out in public, it could have meant harm to her family, not only harm to herself. So uh, she, uh, it was never meant to be funny. It was meant to be a payback that only the two of them would know about. If you push too hard, then it becomes a joke or it becomes a melodrama in either direction. Uh, so there's a, a balance you have to strike. Um, and for me, the balance it comes when you find the truth of whatever the scene is and whatever the circumstance of the moment is. And the truth for many and all of the maids uh, was basically providing a better life for uh, their children and gaining civil rights. Snowpiercer. Well, I'd never done one of those post-apocalyptic uh, films and definitely not action. And, you know, to work with Chris Evans, who just is poetic with his stunt work, so much so that uh, I had been working for a few days with the stunt coordinator and, you know, kind of bumbled through and I thought I was doing great and then I saw it in playback. I'm like, that looks horrible. I remember the stunt coordinator telling Chris, okay, so these two guys are gonna, they're gonna confront you, you're gonna take them out, they're, this guy's gonna come in from the back, you know, do a couple of rounds with him, and then you're gonna finish the last guy off. And then Chris does it, and it was the most beautiful thing you'd ever seen. And I was so mad, I, I said, well, how long have you guys been rehearsing that? He said, well, no, he just told me what, what he wanted. And I said, but no, how long have you been, been rehearsing it? And he said, well, he just, he just, you saw, he just told me, I'm like, no, but how long did you rehearse it? You know, and so that's when I realized that there's so much more to what we do because I've been a walk and talk actor largely and I, I like being a walk and talk actor. It was very difficult, but a lot of fun, but there were a lot of things about me that I, I terrified of being hit. And so there was a sequence coming up. We go through a tunnel and we're fighting the bad guys, but then it gets really dark. 
<laughs> and I started having a panic attack because I thought, well, all the lights are going to go out and somebody's going to hit me for real. Chris kind of picked up on that. And I think I just burst into tears. I'm like, I'm terrified, I'm terrified that I'm gonna get hit. And he was so sweet that when he got done with hair and makeup, he kind of went and, you know, relayed to the uh, ADs and the director that I might not need to be in the dark scene <laughs> where we go in the tunnel and everybody's hitting everybody. I love him dearly for that because they took me out of that scene. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Fruitvale Station. Wanda is a very real person who lost her son. And it's the first time that I ever actually had to play someone who was still alive. And then to know that she suffered such a tremendous loss, um, I realized the responsibility was probably far greater than any role I'd ever played because life extended beyond the screen. And it was representative of uh, uh, her son who she no longer had. So um, I felt like we all had a responsibility to show the world that uh, Oscar lived in. You know, sadly, I thought it would impact things socially, like there would be fewer and fewer Trayvon Martins or Oscar Grants, and it seems like it just, things have completely escalated to a point of no return. He didn't make it. I need to see him. Okay, you can see him, but they don't want you to go into the room or to touch him because they rule it a homicide. I can't ever really let Wanda go because although I'm not a mom, I'm an aunt. And I took the role because every time I think of my nephews leaving the house, it do hasn't changed in all these years. I get a, a wave of panic. And uh, I imagine that that's something that she felt as a mother uh, and uh, probably still feels with, you know, her grandkids. So I, it's not something that I, uh, I have ever been able to let go of. Ma. For me, I think the difference in the preparation is that I didn't prepare it as if it were a, a horror film. I prepared it like uh, all the other roles that I've ever done. The genre didn't matter to me. It's the character, the whole character that I was creating. Girls, girls, you guys want to party like rock stars or what? No, I got to clean the house before my mom gets home. Hey, maybe next time. Damn, Ma, don't you got a job? Yeah, I guess I should work a double since you guys don't have time for me. There's a lot of pathos um, with, uh, with Sue Ann. And then the other part, the part where she kills people, because that's not a part of my nature, I had to make that more comedic in my mind. Maybe not in the actual execution of the role, but I had to make that funny in my mind because, you know, torturing people is, you know, there's no way to justify it. And you, you can't play a character effectively that you judge. Ah! Stop! Liar. I don't relish the idea of having blood all over me or, you know, some crazy rig that they have to do. I, I'm, I was glad that I'm not, I wasn't on that side of it. Truth be told, Poppy. She got caught up with the idea that this uh, young man from a very affluent family, she was really hung up on that and, and thought, you know, will he get a fair trial or will he get off because he's from an affluent family? And all of that led to great fame for her because, you know, she helped with all of her articles to shape the mind of the, the public. Is there an innocent man in prison? And did I lead that charge? It's easy to draw on uh, the social norms now, the cancel culture. When Poppy's career uh, is on the ascension, there wasn't the uh, uh, social media channels and uh, she basically, it was when people actually still read the newspaper, uh, still watched the news and listening to podcasts and, and, you know, talking to Sarah Kane and allowed, you know, space for, for, for podcasts in, in general to help shape Poppy. Hidden figures. When I heard about the premise of this film, of Hidden Figures, I thought it was uh, historical fiction 
the help was historical fiction. And I thought, surely we would have known if all of these women, black women, uh, were so integral to the space race. I mean, this, <laughs> come on, it's definite fiction, right? So to find out that it was actually true, that there's so many women uh, whose names that we don't know. That a girl. <laughs> hey, what the hell are you doing? You can't be in here. Who are you? I'm with the West Computing Group. Dorothy Vaughn, sir. Well, this is a very delicate piece of equipment. I'm sorry, sir. I'm just trying to be helpful. Uh huh. Bill, we've got numbers. What kind of numbers? What's your name again? Dorothy Vaughn. Dorothy Vaughn. I read a lot about Dorothy. She actually was one of the most brilliant scientific minds, and she's credited with so much at NASA. She's very prolific in their materials. It's like, how can these names be so prolific? Uh, with this institution in the world not know about her. But yeah, I read a lot about Dorothy and did a lot of research into her life. I don't ever want to be a part of anything that has any hidden figures. You know, you want to give praise where praise is due and you want to acknowledge everyone on the team because that's stuff that we take for granted. You know, they, they weren't allowed that luxury. They were taken for granted. The Shape of Water. I've watched everything Guillermo has directed. I've, everything before I, I knew him. Um, I was a fan because he loves creatures and things, and, he, and I, I'm also fascinated by creatures and, and things. So when I um, met with him, it was supposed to be like a little coffee and, you know, an introduction. And we sat and we talked for like three hours. He never mentioned the script. We talked about everything, politics, food, antiques. We both have a love uh, for antiques. And then at the end of that three hour meeting, he said, oh, I wrote this part specifically for you. Um, I'd love to know what you think. And I was like, okay. So I race home and I read the first page and everything happens underwater. And I emailed him to say, I'm in. I've only read the first page, but I'm in. Um, I didn't care how big or how small my character was. The fact that he was doing that first scene underwater, I knew I was in capable hands because it's Guillermo. Yeah, that's good. Keep that up. Looking like you don't know anything. Lord, help me if they ask me if I do. I'm not a good liar. Except Bruce. It takes a lot of lies to keep a marriage going. I knew that he was creating something, this beautiful fairy tale, and I just wanted to be a part of it. And an Oscar nomination for working with a director and cast and crew, people that you admire so much, um, I, I definitely fell into a uh, pot of jam, and who doesn't love jam? <laughs>